Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to find the missing number of periods in a compound interest. Now here's the dilemma of uh, this concept because in when you refer to different textbooks, one textbook will show the, for, the first formula and another textbook could be using this formula and another textbook could be using this formula. So they have different notations and they use different letters wherein like J here is just the I in a different book. The N here is the NT that we know from A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to NT. But these three equations are all the same. It's just that uh, they rename the letters with a different one, okay? But when we're looking for the number of periods, here is what you, I want you to keep in mind. The number of periods is basically the exponent. So in this case, it's the NT. Here it's the N. Here it's also the N. In the version of NT, note that T is the time in years. So if a compound interest is compounded, say, monthly, that means the number of periods is 12 times the number of years, say if it is 5 years, the number of periods is 12 times 5 equals 60. In the second formula, if, if you use the second version, then n is basically the number of periods. So if it says 30 here, if it says 30 here, then that's the number of periods. If you want to find the number of years, you just divide the 30 by 12 because there are 12 uh, well it depends again on the number of times the interest is compounded if it's 12 times in a year then this is the number of years for the 30 periods is 30 divided by 12 okay so let's look at a typical example and in this video I'll be focusing on how to apply the first formula, the first version, and then towards the end of this, of this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the n so that we could create a specific formula in finding the number of periods. Okay, So let's suppose that a man invested a certain amount, so we don't know how much. Okay, but what we know is that he invested it at 8% compound interest and it is compounded, say, semi-annually. Semi-annually. Semi-annually means it's twice a year. So, and then this will run for, let's say, six years. And then a question could be, so how many times was it um, compounded? So how many periods? So the missing here is periods. Okay. So it might sound complicated, but remember what I mentioned, that the number of periods is simply the exponent. So it's basically n times the time. So if we know the n and we know the time, then the number of periods is simply n times t. So we have nt, which is equal to n is the number of times the interest is compounded. So it's semi-annually, so it's twice a year, and then the, the amount will be compounded for six years, so the time is six. So the number of period is 2 times 6, which is equal to 12. So that's how you find the number of periods. It's not really that complicated. Now there are instances in which uh, the given are different. So instead of having 8% and the number of years, sometimes you also have the future value and the present value. Okay, so let's look at the two other formulas. For instance, uh, let's focus on F, the future value, 
is equal to p times 1 plus i raised to n. Okay. So if we're looking for the n, so let's say f, so let's just write it again, raised to n. In this formula, take note, this is the number of periods. In the other formula, this, this is equivalent to nt. So if we want the period directly, and we are given the f and the p, then we can actually find the n by manipulating this formula. So what we can do first, since we want to isolate the n, we can divide both sides by p. Dividing both sides by p will make it f over p is equal to 1 plus i raised to n. Now again, this is a case in which we want to find the exponent. Every time that happens, the approach that you can use is the use of log or ln. Okay, Let's try log this time. So log f over p must be equal to the log of 1 plus i raised to n. And this will give you log f over p is equal to n times log of 1 plus i using the power rule. So for logarithms. And since we are looking for n, what we can do now is to divide both sides by log of 1 plus i log of 1 plus i. So cancel this. This will give you the number of periods n which is equal to log of f over p over log of 1 plus i. Okay? So this formula is something that you can use immediately when you are looking for the number of periods. If you're given future value, the present value, and this i here is given. This is the interest um, based on how many times it is compounded. Okay. Now, this is an expression of log, so you might encounter a different textbook or different sources in which the expression could be a little different. Now, if you remember the change of base idea, if you have log base A, B, this can be written as log base B over log base A, and you can choose any base C. So this part of the formula is similar or actually follows this form. So we can put it back to a single log by having the denominator as the base and the numerator as the value B. So that means n in another form is log with base 1 plus i of f over p. And you can still extend this into n equals log base 1 plus i of f minus log base 1 plus i of p. So there are many things that you can do with the formula depending on the need. If you want to make it as a single log, if you want to expand it using some properties, like in this case, the quotient law, then the n could take so many different forms. Okay, but the base formula is n, is log of the quotient of f, of, of f and p over the log of 1 plus i. Okay, so that's how you... Um, manipulate the formula so that you can create a new value. Okay, so core idea of this video was on finding the number of periods and that is one example given that the interest compounded in a could be semi-annually, quarterly, monthly and in this example we have semi-annually so that's why we use two. Okay, so always remember the number of periods is simply nt. You use this when you're given the n, number of times it is compounded, 
semi-annually and the number of years that it will run so 2 times 6 so we have 12 so we have 12 periods in all okay another case is that if you are just uh, creating a formula you want to make an n formula directly using the f and the p it's log of f over p over log of 1 plus i okay so that's it